In this video, we will look at Java arrays. We'll see what we mean by a Java array. Why do we need to use arrays in our program? How to declare an array and instantiate it? And later we'll see how we can access the array elements in our array. So let's start by understanding what do we mean by an array. An array in Java or any programming language is actually a collection or a sequence of variables of the same data type. And usually when we create an array, they all will represent the same type of data. So for example, if we are storing the temperature for multiple days, all my data elements in that array will represent a daily temperature. So an array is a, a collection of variables of the same data type. This collection could be of primitive data types like integers, doubles, booleans, or it could be even an array of objects. So a collection of um, the type object. Um, each variable in this array, we will call it an element, and each element will have an index, just like what we had with strings. So the first character in our string was at index 0 or location 0. Same thing we'll do with our arrays. The first element in our array will be at location um, 0, and then we also have a length for that array. So the last element in our array will be at location length minus um, 1. So why do we need to use arrays? Let's look at an example. Let's say that you want to store the temperature um, for five days in a week. Let's say we are storing the temperature for five days in a week. To store temperatures for a day, for a specific day, you will need to create a variable and let's call it temperature one. And you will store the value of that day or the temperature in that day. So we're creating a variable in the memory called temp one. And we are storing the value which was 38 in that day. And this is the temperature in that day. Now for the second day, we also needed to create another um, variable and we called it temperature two, and we are storing the value 41 in that, um, in that variable. For the third day, we will need to create a new variable. We are calling it temperature three and we are storing the value 78 in there. Same thing for day four and same thing for day five. So you notice we are actually using five different variables to store our temperatures. Although we are storing the same type of data that represents the same um, information that we want to store, but we are actually creating five different variables to store that. Now, why is this a problem? Let's try to see that in Eclipse. So here in Eclipse, I'm gonna create these variables and let's assume that we are storing only integer temperatures. So integer temperature one, and let's assign it a value for example, 38. Let's create another value for our temperatures. So for the second day, temperature two, let's assign the value 41, um, integer temperature three equals um, 42, for example, integer temperature four equals 70, and then integer temperature five equals 80. So again, I'm storing only temperatures for five different days and each one of them I had to create a different variable with a different name to store this data. Although they all start with temp, however, each one of them has a unique name. Now the problem here, if I wanted to print these temperature values, to be able to print them, I will be needing to use the system.out.println and I need to print each temperature on its own. So temperature one, and then for temperature two, temperature two, I will be needing another system.out.print line to be able to print the second temperature. So temperature two and so on. I'm just gonna copy and paste these and change the values to save some time. Temperature three, temperature four, and then the last one system.out.print line temperature five. So you'll notice that I needed five different print line commands to be able to print these five um, variables. Now for now, it doesn't look that bad, but imagine that you have a hundred days or the full year, 365 days. In that case, you will need to create 365 different variables with different names. And you'll also need a 365 print operations, which is a lot of code. Now, you will notice we are repeating the same operation. We are just printing the temperature. So it will be very helpful if we are, if we were able to use one of the loop, it, um, loop operations that we used in Java before, like the for loop. Now the for loop, when we did it with strings, if you remembered, 
we were able to use the index of the character to be able to print the character in that string. So if we had a string, for example, name, and let's store my name in there. This is the name. To be able to print the name character by character, instead of using five or six um, system.out.println commands, I could use a for loop starting from integer i equals zero and i is less than the string.length, so name dot length and then i plus plus to go to the next character and i only needed one system dot out dot print line command and i used the name dot car at the index which is i so that allowed me to print all the characters in my name one character at a time just by iterating through the index which is i of that character so we started with the first character at index 0 the second character at index 1 the third at index 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that's what we are trying to do with arrays. Instead of having to do five print lines, I can do use a for loop to iterate through these items one by one using their index, and that's what we are going to do with arrays. So instead of creating five different variables, we'll create one collection with the variable name temp, and this collection will have all these variables in there or all these values in there. Each value will have an index. So each one is called an element and it will have an index. Remember, we are starting the indexing with from zero up to the length minus one. So we have five temperatures. So it's going from zero to four. At each index, we are storing a different value for the temperature. And that's how we will be able to iterate through these values using a for loop like we did with strings. So how do we declare arrays in Java? Arrays are considered as objects in, in Java. So we to create an array, we need two steps. The first one is to actually declare a reference to that array. So this is the pointer to a location in the memory where we are going to store the array elements. And then we will instantiate the array by creating the new object. So to declare a reference, this will be our syntax. We have the data type followed by two square brackets that will indicate that we have a collection, not only one single element, and then the array name that you are going to give for that array. So the data type, just like we did before, integer, double, or even an object of a class. For example, if we have the class student, we want to create a collection of students. So we use student, and then two square brackets to indicate that we have a collection now, not only a single element, and then the array name. Once you have the array um, reference, you can instantiate that array. So you, this array name will be equal to a new followed by the same data type that you um, assigned for that array. So if it was an integer array, so a new integer, and then in the square brackets, you will tell me how many elements you will have in that array. So this is the size, and this is an expression that will evaluate to an integer that will tell you how many elements you have in that um, array. So let's try to do that in Eclipse. I'm going to create an array of integers. So the first step, I want to create an integer array. So integer, the data type, two square brackets that will indicate we have a collection, not a single element anymore. And then we will give it the name. So let's give it the name temp. So now we have an array reference. What will this do? It will go point to a location in the memory with the pointer temp. And in this location, we are not going to store one element. We are going to store a collection of elements. Now, once we have this pointer, we will instantiate our array by telling Java how many elements we will have in that location. So we'll use the array name equals new to create a new collection. And this collection will be an array of integers. And then in the square brackets, we'll tell Java how many elements we are going to store there. So if we are going to store five temperatures, this is the size that we will put here. So the size, this is the number of elements we will have in that array. You can also do the whole operation in one line. So you do not have to do it in two separate lines. You can do the um, declaration and the instantiation, instantiation in the same line. So instead of saying temperature um, in here equals to new integer, I can do it in the same line. So a new integer array with five elements in here. So this is how we declare and instantiate an array at the same time. So we did not assign elements yet. We are just creating a pointer to a location in the memory and we are telling Java how many elements we will have in that um, location. 
Now that we have our array ready, we can access the array elements using the index. So to be able to access the array um, elements, we'll use this syntax, the array name, and then in square brackets, you will have an expression that represents the index of that element that you want to access. So this expression is going to evaluate to an integer, and this integer will be the index of the element that we want to access. The index starts from zero, so the first element is in our array is at location zero, and the last element will be the length of that array minus one. To get the length of an array, you can use the array name dot length, and that will get you how many elements we have in that array. So remember, that length is not the last element. This is how many elements we have. The last element will be at the array name dot length minus one. Now, the difference between the string length and the array length, in here we do not have the parentheses after the length because the length in the array is considered as a variable, an integer variable. It's not considered as a method like we have in strings. In strings, the length is considered as a method. In arrays, the length is considered as a variable or an integer variable. So do we do not put the parentheses after the length in here. Now, since we did not assign any values to our array elements yet, Java will assign the default values for our elements. So if we created an array of doubles, the default value or the initial value that we'll give to our elements will be 0, 0.0. Same thing with float, it will be 0, 0.0. For integer, long, short, and byte, the default or initial value will be zero. Um, the characters will be initialized to the null character, which is the Unicode um, 0, 0, 0, 0. The Boolean variables will be initialized to false. And then the object references will be initialized um, to null. So let's try to access one of the array elements that um, we have in here. So again, since we did not initialize or give values to our array elements yet, Java will assign them the default values. So for the integer array, the default value will be zero for our array element. So again, to access an array element, let's actually print an array element system.out.println. And to access an array element, we use the array name, which is in this case temp. And in square brackets, we'll put the index of the element that we want to access. Since the first element is at location zero, I'm going to print that element. So we'll put in square brackets after the array name, we'll put the index zero, and that's the first element in our array. So if we try to run that um, code, it will be printing zero, which is the element at location zero. If we want to print the second element that's at location one, if we run it now, it will print also zero because all my array elements will have now um, the value zero. Now, if we wanted to see how many elements we have in the array, we can use the dot length um, variable. So temp, this is the array name dot and then length. And you will notice it, it is a variable. So we did not need to put the parentheses. If you put the parentheses, you will have the red line because we do not have a method in that array called length. We only have a variable called length which stores the number of elements we have in that array. So if we run it, since we have five elements, we'll get back the number five, which is the number of elements we have in that um, array. So again, to access an array elements, we put the array name followed by square brackets. And in these square brackets, we'll put the index of that element. So the last element will be at the um, length of that array minus one, which is four. So if we use that, it will um, print the last element, which also stores the value zero in there. Now, if we wanted to change what we stored in an array element, we can use the index of that array element to change the value. So temp at location zero, I want it to now equal to the value um, 35. So what will that do? We'll go to the array temperature and at location zero, I want the value there to be equal to 35. So that will change the value we have in that array element. Let's do um, a change for the array element at location one. Let's assign it the value 45, temperature two, at location two, we'll assign it the value 70, um, the temperature at location three, we'll assign it the value um, 67, and then the temperature at location four, which is the last element we have, let's assign it the value 90. So now we changed the values in our array. So we have, instead of the initial value zero that was given to every value or every element in our array, we gave them different um, numbers. Now, if we want to print the array element at a specific location, system.out.println, we want to print the temperature at location, for example, two. That's our third element. 
we'll go and print the value 70. So if we save this and run it, it will actually print the value 70, which is what we stored in the location two. Now, if you want to get the last element, if you do not know how many elements you have, you can get the temperature dot length that will get you the last or the number of elements, but it's not the last element. To get the last element, you will have to put minus one and that will get you the last element, which is element at four. Why? Because the length is five. We do not have an element at location five. The last element is at location four. So five minus one will give you the element at location four. So if we save this and run it, it will give me the last element value, which is 90. Now, if you already know the array elements that you will have in your array, instead of instantiating the array as an empty array and letting Java assign the initial values, if you already know the values you want to store in that array, you can actually pass these values in an initialization list. So instead of doing this, we can pass the values directly in an initialization list. In this case, you do not need the new keyword. You can pass this list in two curly brackets and then these values, you'll pass them um, separated by commas. So 50, for example, 36, 67, 98, and let's say 45. So you'll see that we have all the elements assigned directly in here. So this is the first element at location zero, the second element at location one, at location two, at location three, and at location four. So this is what we call an initialization list. You give that list when you create the array, you initialize it directly using this list, which is a comma separated values that are surrounded in curly braces. So the last element will still be at temp.length minus one. So if we run this code now, it will print the value 45, which is the last element we have in that array. And again, this is what we call an initialization um, list. Now, an important note to remember about arrays is once you use an initialization list, you cannot reinitialize that array. So I cannot go again here and say temp and then pass another initialization list in here. So once you use an initialization list once, you will not be able to use um, uh, initialize it again. So you cannot initialize the list again. 